you think you've already received the Holy Ghost you're really out of line to be able to receive the Holy Ghost but if you believe you haven't received the Holy Ghost then you're in line you're in the right line to receive him he had not fallen on any of them right I'm not trying to receive another measure of anointing I'm trying to receive the he that is the Holy Ghost and if I do that correctly I'm on the right footing and I'm going in the right direction with God the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today the Father is in heaven Jesus at his right hand let's pray Holy Ghost to worship you thank you that you are God in the earth today and we can walk with you by saying words I do worship you and I ask you for your plan and purpose for every person in the sound of my voice I thank you that you're quickening them right now I appreciate it in Jesus name amen. amen the purpose of this message is to have you meet and receive the Holy Ghost as God and begin speaking as he gives you utterance which would be in other tongues now a lot of you know this I know this a lot of people that are listening online know this but the fact is a lot of people don't know it and they don't know they're tripped up on it somehow that whether they've received the Holy Ghost or they haven't received the Holy Ghost whether they've spoken tongues or not most people know whether they've spoken tongues or not but that's the point that's where we're going mm -hmm. sometimes it helps to tell people where we're going you're gonna receive the Holy Ghost as God and begin speaking with tongues as he gives you utterance if you listen by the end of this message that where that's where we should be all of you online that are you know hoping to be filled with the Holy Ghost and speak with other tongues just stay tuned we're gonna walk you through it and then by the end of this you'll be able to receive and begin speaking so first of all I would like to address what I believe to be an error in the body of Christ and it bugs me it bugs me a lot is that people if they think they have the Holy Ghost when they got born again then they're not gonna receive him are you here mm -hmm. why would I I already have him so I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna try to go through this quickly because that's not the main crux of this message but I believe it's an error that holds people back from receiving the Holy Ghost because they think they already have mm -hmm. how can you receive something someone that you think you already have you wouldn't right. ah wouldn't receive that I already have that are you here so anyway so let's look at Acts chapter 2 I know you found it by now Acts chapter 2 verse 38 then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for what the remission of sins so if if I do this if I repent and am baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins what does that make me now, according to anybody's anybody's definition that's a Christian probably most of them in all the list that I read that would make you a believer right that would make you a Christian of that particular denomination you got baptized most of them required you get baptized into their denomination are you here yes. but I've repented and I've believed on Jesus and I've got news for you it says it over and over and over and over it never says receive Jesus it says to believe on Jesus mm -hmm. here's the fact Jesus died for your sins according to the scriptures for your sins was raised on the third day right yes. and is now seated at the right hand of the Father right. when you believe on him and repent what happens you get born again you get your new inner man gets renewed but that is not receiving the Holy Ghost that is an operation of the Holy Ghost but that's not receiving the Holy Ghost as a person which is what we're talking about today knowing God the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today well let me read on here then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall say shall yeah. shall receive doesn't mean will have received if you were believed and baptized then you would have received that's not what he said he said you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. for the promise is unto you and to your children and to the all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call are you here in order to receive you must first realize that you haven't right I mean, it's one of the things we do with people when we get them saved you got to realize you need a savior 
you got to realize you need to repent jesus already paid for the sins why are you dying going to heaven to hell you could die go to heaven right mm -hmm. already paid for in order to receive you must realize that you need to receive and that you haven't yet and if we have this false doctrine you hear with me if we have this false doctrine that says that you already have the holy ghost mm -hmm. and then you just need another measure or you need another gift or you need another something or you need another anointing you just need to release the tongues how is that respecting him and receiving him as a person it's not it minimizes him as god in the earth today and so they're on the wrong foot and they're going down this road and they're never going to get there mm -hmm. are you here so here we say I could take you to a whole bunch of other scriptures but just for time's sake like I said this isn't really my message is to get us to our message the right way on the right footing so we're not receiving another an anointing from the person of the Holy Ghost that we somehow received back when we got saved right mm -hmm. but we're receiving a person now I'm saved now I'm a new creation in Christ now I receive the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today are you getting this so we got repent and believe on Jesus over and over in the scriptures believe and repent repent and believe believe and repent repent and believe you see that's what's required is you rep remember the remember the guy that came into the uh, the synagogue there and he wouldn't even lift up his head and he went up to the altar and he said God be merciful to me a sinner remember that he walked out of there Jesus said that man left here justified it was the repenting and believing that justifies someone mm -hmm. the people on the cross remember them two people on the cross next to Jesus mm -hmm. one didn't repent the other one did what did he do mm -hmm. I believe he said I believe on you Jesus right yes. and he said I'm sorry I'm a sinner what did Jesus say to that guy today you will be with me in paradise are you here yes. what did he do receive the Holy Ghost no he repented and he believed that's the qualification for getting born again getting saved becoming a believer yeah. believing am I beating this thing up enough it's not just this isn't just a pet peeve it to me it's something that's that's an error that's tripping people up from receiving the Holy Ghost in the proper capacity that he should be received as God in the earth today Glory be to God forever. I'm excited about it. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 5, let's look at verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Right? When does that happen? When you believe mm -hmm. and repent. So what happens when someone gets born again? They become a new creature. It did not say they were filled with with the Holy Ghost are you here yes. there's a difference what happens is God comes in he does do a work in you and that still would be the Holy Ghost doing a work in you he comes in and he washes all your sins away as far as the East is from the West and whoosh, whatever he does there's probably a sound that goes with it whoosh, whoosh, and you are a new creature brand new never existed before that's literally what that meant inside clean sparkly like mr. clean sands the earring but you understand right there's no sin in there but does that mean you are filled with the Holy Ghost? no that means you're now a vessel that is ready to receive the Holy Ghost because yeah. he's a Holy Ghost yeah. right yeah. but it doesn't mean that he's in you now it means you were born again that's it that's right. are you here yes. that is not receiving the Holy Ghost if we say that it is we're on the wrong footing to receive the Holy Ghost because we said we already have it I can't even tell a lot of people that I would associate with still believe that and say that and preach that it bothers me so is it possible to be forgiven born again new creation you understand we all have these different terms we use in all of those groups but if you've repented and you've believed and baptism is part of that um, confession of your belief but the, the point still remains is you repent and you believe and then you confess and you establish it are you here so is it possible to be forgiven born again a new creation and yet not have received the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. hundreds 
of denominations would say a definitive no to that answer to that question is it possible to be recreated born again forgiven on your way to heaven if you died and have not received the Holy Ghost they would say no 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 you must have received the Holy Ghost are you here now I'm just gonna I'm gonna use the scriptures I'm gonna take you to some verses of scriptures you can make your own decision okay go to Acts chapter 8 who yeah glory be to God forever Acts chapter 8 verse 5 then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them right so he's preaching the word preach Christ unto them verse 6 and the people with one accord gave heed meaning they heard they gave heed to the things which Philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did verse 7 for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out and many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed let's read down to verse 12 but when they believed say they believed when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ they believed the name of Jesus Christ they were baptized both men and women now according to any one of our standards in all of these churches right and our standard included what would they be now saved believers Christians Especially if they got baptized in our church if they believe and they've repented right they heard the message they repented what message do you think they heard that Jesus died for their sins and was raised according to the scriptures that's what Philip was preaching right yes. these people are saved mm -hmm. by any standard that any of us have when they verse 12 again but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ they were baptized both men and women and baptism is a testimony and a confession of faith yeah. Acts chapter 8 verse 14 now when the Apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the Word of God they sent unto them Peter and John now would that take a while yeah. Yeah. and that day it would take at least a day right for more than a day because they would have had to hear had to have heard what happened down there that people had believed and were baptized right they go oh we got to go down there who when they were come down prayed for them them believers that they might receive the Holy Ghost my question to you is if they had received the Holy Ghost already being born again why would they go down and pray for them that they would receive the Holy Ghost that would make no sense they would have said let's go down there and pray that the tongues will be released and then he sounded like no they didn't sound like that. <laughs> are you here is this in your Bible yes, yes. we know they were already saved they were already born again and they said we were gonna go come down there verse 15 who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost for as yet he are you here yes. Yes. are we talking about that, sh that should have said for as yet the next little measure of anointing had not come upon them the next release of the anointing that caused them to be able to speak in the tongues had not come upon them who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost verse 16 for as yet he the person of the Holy Ghost was fallen upon none of them only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost who received the Holy Ghost they did did they receive the Holy Ghost before this no were they saved before this yes. yes all right they were the ones well verse 17 when they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost who received the Holy Ghost they did who did the people who had already been born again yes. are you here yes. the people who had already been born again received the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. 
is it possible to be born again and not have received the Holy Ghost according unless you want to rip, rip this verse of Scripture out too then it's not only possible it's very likely mm -hmm. brother you get all excited about this stuff I know sometimes you have to be excited when you're up against a thousand denominations but if you think you've already received the Holy Ghost you're really out of line to be able to receive the Holy Ghost but if you believe you haven't received the Holy Ghost then you're in line you're in the right line to receive him he had not fallen on any of them right I'm not trying to receive another measure of anointing I'm trying to receive the he that is the Holy Ghost yes. and if I do that correctly I'm on the right footing and I'm going in the right direction with God the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today yes. are you getting this mm -hmm. you all right that I'm using the scriptures Acts chapter 16 oh this is when they were they were in prison there Paul and, and Silas right um, verse uh, Acts chapter 16 let's look at um, let's read verse 26 and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed 27 the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had fled verse 28 but Paul cried with a loud voice saying uh, do nothing do yourself no harm we're all here we didn't flee and then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas verse 30 and brought them out and said sirs what must I do to be saved are you here yes. now if the Bible is specifically saying lining up those words in specific order in black and white what must I do to be saved do you think that you could rely on the next verses of Scripture that come after it yes. all right verse 31 and they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house mm -hmm. and your house yes. what was the requirement that this man be saved believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for their sins according to scriptures that's what he would have obviously had to tell him about probably he had already told him that before mm -hmm. did it say receive the Holy Ghost no. no there'll be a lot of people that you know you meet up in heaven you go hey, hey what's going on they're going hey, hey, hey I wish I received the Holy Ghost but they're gonna go I didn't know there was any Holy Ghost right. no one told us about the Holy Ghost well, how does this even happen <sighs> what must I do to be saved believe on the Lord Jesus Christ thou shalt be saved saved yes filled with the Holy Ghost no I hope I've already proven that out so far Acts chapter 19 verse 1 and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth Paul having passed through the upper coasts came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples verse 2 he said unto them now mind you what's going on here we have the Apostle Paul finding certain disciples right he found them and he's gonna open his mouth and he's gonna say a string of words the first thing he says to them have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed mm -hmm. he found out they were believers right disciples believers and he said have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe why in your Bible would Paul ever say those words if they had already received the Holy Ghost when they believed it wouldn't even it wouldn't have been a question it would have been a statement he right. says you've received the Holy Ghost when you believed that's not what he said he said have you look what they say he said unto them have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed and they said unto him we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost you know how many people get annoyed at me because I preach on the Holy Ghost all the time and they write me nasty letters and they say don't, don't tell people to stop worshiping Jesus I never told you to stop worshiping Jesus I'm just saying you need to give honor to the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today and worship him I like the twist of the things you say but a lot of these people have never heard whether there be any Holy Ghost and the only Holy Ghost they heard about was that there's an extra special anointing for special people when the tongues are released 
are they respecting the person of the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today no nor are they receiving him in the way and capacity to which he should be honored and received so why would Paul is ask yourself the question there I've, I've thought about this believe me I've come out of these groups that that preach that that you have the Holy Ghost when you're born again no he's done a work in you because anything done in the work by God is by the Holy Ghost but you have not received him are you here and if you think you have received him when you haven't then how are you going to receive him but I've thought about this verse of Scripture and there's no wiggle room zero wiggle room Paul said have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe where's the wiggle room in that if they had received the Holy Ghost when they believed he wouldn't have asked the question but him asking the question proves it verse 5 when they had heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus verse 6 and when Paul had now they, they believed and then they were baptized are you here and then when Paul laid his hands upon them the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today came on them and they what spake with tongues and prophesied so now we begin to see here what the evidence is I don't again all of these things could be separate individual messages but I'm trying to condense it into one thing mm -hmm. the evidence of receiving the Holy Ghost biblically is that you speak with other tongues as he gives you utterance well I'll prove that to me okay go over to uh, Acts 10 glory be to God forever let's look at verse 44 here's Peter preaching to uh, Cornelius's household and while Peter yet spake these words the Holy Ghost again the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word and they of the circumcision were which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the person of the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak with tongues how did the people that came with Peter know that the Holy Ghost came on them you can't see the Holy Ghost right unless you have special vision unless he quickened your eyes somehow which he could do he did that to John the Baptist when the Holy Ghost came on Jesus but here we got we got this how did the circumcision which believed that came with Peter no verse 46 for they heard them speak with tongues are you here how did they know they were filled they heard them speak what is the evidence of people being filled they begin to speak Acts chapter 2 remember on the day of Pentecost when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues are you here yes. what's the evidence of being filled or receiving or the Holy Ghost coming on you you begin to speak they began to speak the Holy Ghost began to speak no they began to speak all right are you getting this how do you know you're filled how do you know when somebody's filled they'll begin to speak how do you know you're filled when I begin to speak are you here yeah. okay a lot of people don't like it that way but that's the way it is you receive the Holy Ghost you begin to speak with other tongues so our goal here is to get you to know the Holy Ghost as God today and walk with him by saying words what are some of the words you're gonna say if you know and you're introduced to the Holy Ghost you meet the Holy Ghost what are you gonna start doing you're gonna start speaking as he gives you utterance so first things first you've got to know that there is a Holy Ghost remember over in Acts chapter 19 verse 2 they're like we didn't know there even was a Holy Ghost well I'm telling you today I'm the preacher here telling you there is a Holy Ghost Jesus sent the Holy Ghost into the earth he's literally in the earth today and when you receive him he will give you utterance and you have to begin to speak as he gives you utterance I'm gonna walk you through that but you got to begin at the beginning 
where did they begin they received the Holy Ghost they said back at the beginning we received the Holy Ghost and began to speak and because it's the beginning it's not difficult it, there's no special talent that you have you simply have to be willing to believe and receive and be willing to speak in faith mm -hmm. are you getting this yes. I'm gonna say that several times you have to be willing to speak in faith because speaking is the evidence this is not as advanced as some would have you believe especially in a lot of those denominations a lot of them will say well we don't all speak with tongues but you know cousin Bob and pastor so-and-so he speaks in tongues he's got the tongues you understand so they're, they're they're putting it off as it's some kind of an advanced have you been in those circles I've been in those circles where they didn't they didn't deny that you could speak re receive the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues but those people were whoo those people were those were super spiritual people right but it's not advanced we see it was right at the beginning people in Cornelius's house they got born again and filled with the Holy Ghost at the same time at the beginning mm -hmm. takes no particular talent it's not some advanced degree that you have to have it's literally the beginning of walking with God the Holy Ghost in the earth what it takes is a willingness to believe and receive him the Holy Ghost and a willingness to speak in faith the things that he gives you first Corinthians 14 15 you don't have to turn there it says I will pray with the Spirit you have to be willing to pray with the Spirit some people I've seen it you pray for them you ask them they say they receive the Holy Ghost and yet they're unwilling to say anything you'll even ask them later didn't you have some words floating up out of you yeah but they're just unwilling they're waiting for the Holy Ghost to make them speak but it doesn't say it said they spoke as he gave them utterance they began to speak with tongues who did the speaking in that they the people that received begin to speak and they have to do it in faith I'm telling you I've been speaking in tongues for years and years and years and years and every single time I go to open my mouth I have to speak in faith it's easier now because I do it all the time but you have to open your mouth in faith and as you begin to speak he gives you more utterance he's always giving the utterance please listen to me he's in the earth and he's always giving you the utterance you simply need to receive him and begin to be willing to speak number one you have to know that it you know that it is God's will for you to receive the Holy Ghost right I've been telling you about the Holy Ghost faith comes by hearing I've been preaching about the Holy Ghost you have to know that it's God's will for you say I know, I know. it's God's, it's God's will, will for me, for me it's God's will for every believer to be filled with the Holy Ghost and speak with other tongues it's the pattern you got to know that it's God's will for you Acts chapter 2 verse 38 then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost verse 39 for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall to call so who is the promise to all and that do you are you in that yes. yeah so do you qualify yes. yeah it's God's will for you because you're a whosoever I got I get a kick out of this one go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 17 and verse 17 says and it shall come to pass in the last days saith God I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh do you have flesh yes. do you qualify yes. to receive the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. yes is it God's will for you to receive the Holy Ghost yes mm -hmm. you have to be convinced and first of all know that it's God's will for you John chapter 7 in verse 37 in the last day the great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink he that believes on me as the scripture hath said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water verse 39 but this spake he of the Spirit 
which they that believe on him should receive they should receive, should receive. does everyone receive yeah. no but they should yeah. right it's God's will for them to receive but they have to receive yeah. anytime God puts something out there like that that these people should do something you're gonna have some people doing it and other people not mm -hmm. but they should is it God's will for you yes you got to know that it's God's will for you it's God's will for everyone who believes on Jesus they should receive mm -hmm. who receive the Holy Ghost it's Jesus's will he just said it there that people should do it so it is God's will people understand that they should receive then some people just don't know how to receive well let's go through this so number one you have to know that it's God's will for you we've already established that say it's God's will for me it's God's will for me. number two you have to believe that he gives when you ask just bear with me here there are people who need to receive the Holy Ghost and it's not difficult actually it's very easy you just have to know how to go about it so uh, Luke chapter 11 and verse 9 and I say unto you ask and it shall be given you well what if you want the Holy Ghost to be given you what do you got to do ask. ask ask and it shall be given seek you shall find knock it shall be open unto you for everyone that asks receives when do you receive when you, when you ask I'm gonna show you that too in a minute everyone that asks receive he that seeks find to him that knocks it shall be open if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father will he give him a stone no or if he asks a fish will he for a fish give him a serpent no or if he asks for an egg will he offer him a scorpion no what kind of father is this if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more shall your heavenly father say heavenly father, heavenly father. how do you get a heavenly father but by being born again you understand how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him are you here yes. and what did he say he that asks receives say he that asks, he that asks. Receives. receives when do you receive when you ask now let's quickly go to I'll show you the mechanism of this mark chapter 11 most of you know this mark chapter 11 and verse 24 therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray believe you receive them and you shall have them when do you believe you receive them when you pray it's the mechanism what things soever you desire in this case we're desiring the Holy Ghost to receive the Holy Ghost right whatever you desire the Holy Ghost when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them so we kind of have that already taken care of mm -hmm. the father said he's gonna give you the Holy Ghost when you ask you will receive so when you pray our job is to believe we receive when we pray now if I pray and I ask the father for the Holy Ghost what do I believe now after I've prayed that I've received yeah. that I have the Holy Ghost you understand yes. see and it's not some big thing because you're not praying something for God to send the Holy Ghost into the earth he's actually already here <laughs> you know I like to put it this way I'm not trying to confuse anyone but according to that verse of Scripture because this was in Jesus day and he was talking about the Father you can ask the Father for the Holy Ghost he will give you the Holy Ghost yeah I don't even have a problem if you're asking Jesus for the Holy Ghost he'll still send the Holy Ghost because the Father and Jesus were the ones who said they'd send the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. Do you understand so I don't have a problem with that the better way in my estimation is to ask the Holy Ghost himself to come upon you why because he is literally God he's the one in the earth today he's the one you're receiving he's been sent he's here now are you here yes. so you ask him the Holy Ghost as God he's here so first you got to know it's God's will second you believe you receive when you pray this is very simple third you need to begin to speak as he gives you utterance well what if he does? he gives you utterance he always does he always has he has for the last 2,000 years anyone who receives the Holy Ghost he'll begin to give you utterance 
but you have to speak that's where people get tripped up you know that right yeah. they have to be willing to say something out their mouth that they don't understand with their mind and that's what trips them up they have to be willing to say something out their mouth that they don't understand with their mind i'm going to walk you through it you got to know it's god's will we know that we need to believe we receive when we pray we know how to do that then we're going to begin to speak we are going to begin to utter syllables and speak as he gives us utterance because that's his job his job is to give us the words to speak it's our job to speak them out mm -hmm. in faith yes. say in faith Faith. you have to speak in faith are you here remember speaking in tongues requires no particular talent but a willingness to speak in faith things that you don't understand mm -hmm. you have to vocalize you have to start talking things people understand they should speak in tongues but what they don't understand it doesn't come out of your understanding right you don't understand i understand i should speak in tongues but it doesn't come out of your understanding it comes out of your innermost being and you're speaking in faith mm -hmm. believing that what you're saying is an actual word are you here mm -hmm. it comes out of your willingness to speak in faith mm -hmm. are you hearing that it comes out of your willingness to speak because you're willing to obey you're willing to give obedience now you know you should speak in tongues you know that's the evidence now I have to be willing to speak things that sound foolish to me I have to be willing to be made a fool of by my own mind let alone people around you nobody around you is gonna make a fool of you it's just your own mind's gonna go oh what is that that's stupid it sounds like gibberish sounds like baby talk probably will when you're first filled but a willingness to speak in faith are you getting this yes. this is helping people when you believe you've received he will begin to give you the utterance when you believe you've received he will begin to give you the utterance he's been doing it for thousands of years he does it every time God is not a liar he's faithful to do it he will give you the utterance but you have to utter it you have to be willing to speak in faith you do the speaking I like how dad Hagen used to say this he says you perform the act of receiving him which is speaking in faith you perform the act what is the act of receiving the Holy Ghost is to speak words that you don't know and then continue speaking they began and continued they began and continued and that's the way it is every day when you get up and you go oh, so I'm gonna speak in tongues for an hour oh I gotta begin and then I keep continue for an hour do you understand yes. and every word I'm speaking in faith believing that what I'm saying is something that's in agreement with him him who him the Holy Ghost this is not advanced it happens every time all over the world you're not unique he's God in the earth today people right now are speaking in tongues all over the world millions of people have received just like you mm -hmm. right you just have to know that it, the receiving is for you and then to believe you receive when you pray and then begin to speak as he gives you utterance and that will develop over time my my prayer language is way way developed through use over the years than it was when it when it first when I first began to speak in faith does that make sense yeah. have you ever heard a baby come out and the first thing that usually they go Wah! right mm -hmm. and then after a while they go mama and everybody's like oh their first word like babes in Christ but over time you know they start to say words like phenomena which is phenomenal yeah. takes time takes development anyway I received in my bedroom I heard this message about it nobody prayed for me nobody laid hands on me I used that verse of scripture in, in a Luke chapter 11 that said if I asked the Father in Jesus name he would give me the Holy Ghost and when I prayed I believed I received and then after I received believed I received I looked down on the inside of me and I began to speak I'm not sure I mean I wasn't giving some great unction yabba dabba do 
I wasn't given that just an unction and I began to speak and you know what I'm just gonna tell you that you can receive this or not what it really sounded to me like to my head we used to have a little schnauzer one of those little uh, what are the miniature schnauzers but every once in a while I go up to that dog and I'd say something stupid that meant nothing because she didn't understand what I was saying anyway you know what I'm saying I said oh you skibbe fleeby baba like that you ever done that to an animal where you just said a little something something stupid you whispered sweet nothings you understand you just said or a baby when you go up to a baby you might say a few things they don't understand what you're saying anyway whether you say oh you're such an adorable baby or you just go all good biddy booba laba raba <laughs> that's what it sounded to me like and you know the first thing my head said because I'm so brilliant so that's not it that couldn't possibly be you speaking in other tongues you know what I said oh shut up because I'm speaking in faith I received the Holy Ghost and I'm speaking in faith and the more I speak, spoke in faith the more that language developed to the place where I'm speaking in all kinds of languages do you understand but I had to step out and speak in faith and nobody you know maybe you'll be hit by a giant anointing and have some you know the super exaggerated complete language come on you well glory be to God but 90% of the time that's not the case you speak in faith mm -hmm. are you here yes. but you have to be willing to say something that sounds like gibberish that sounds stupid to your head does this make sense mm -hmm. tell you I'm helping out people sounded to my head like nonsense why because your head doesn't understand what you're saying and it won't ever you may have an interpretation of tongues but that's a completely different gift so you know that is God's will for you you're gonna believe you receive when we pray and then you're going to begin speaking things that you don't understand out your mouth you you know how to speak right you're gonna speak out your mouth those things that come to you and then you're gonna continue to speak it may seem silly it may seem foolish you know and I'm, I'm kind of blessed in that I received the way I did because I, I read a lot of stories and God bless some people in prayer lines and whatnot and they're just you know thrown on the ground and rolled around and slid across the floor and they spoke in tongues for five days and couldn't speak in English I get that glory to God we're like yeah whoo I'm all for it but I didn't it didn't happen to me that way I had to receive by faith by myself in my room I received the Holy Ghost and I had to speak in faith are you here yes. mm -hmm. and my prayer language gets developed I've seen a lot of those people that were flown on the floor and slid across the room where are they today they don't even speak anymore mm -hmm. are you here I'm not saying every one of them but we've all seen it glory be to God so we're gonna continue to speak what may seem silly and foolish but we're speaking in faith until you have a free clear language that opens up to you that's part of the faith deal we walk by faith we act by faith we step out in faith we speak out in faith mm -hmm. we believe we receive and we begin to speak your language will develop you'll get way way beyond gibberish isn't that great yeah Paul said I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all he kept going but every time you're still speaking in faith uh, Ephesians chapter 5 8 says be filled with the Spirit speaking mm -hmm. how are you filled with the Spirit speaking now we know especially you online now we know that it is God's will it's God's will for every believer to be filled with the Holy Ghost to receive the Holy Ghost and begin to speak with tongues as he gives them utterance we now know it's his will we are going to ask and believe we receive when we pray do you understand that mm -hmm. when are we gonna do when are we gonna believe we receive when we pray so we're going to pray we're gonna ask to receive the Holy Ghost right yes. and then as soon as we ask we're gonna believe we've received yes. that's the first part of our part he will then give you the utterance he will come on you and I'm telling you when we pray the Holy Ghost is gonna come on you and then you're gonna have to yield your tongue 
you're gonna have to begin speaking in faith we begin to speak we use our will to begin to speak God will never make you say anything you have to be willing to speak what may seem to be gibberish words that come up out of the inside of you and you're gonna to continue to speak them we begin to speak willingly as he gives us the utterance now I am gonna pray for you you could do this in your own room like I did I took those scriptures I prayed I believed I received and I began to speak I did it all by myself other than the Holy Ghost obviously but I'm gonna pray for you and when I pray for you and you can pray too then the Holy Ghost is literally gonna come on you Amen. he's gonna come on you and then you are going to have to perform the act of receiving him that is to begin speaking as he gives you utterance your tongue will want to say something something that's not your natural language and you need to be the one that lifts your tongue and begins to speak those syllables speak those words speak those things that the Holy Ghost is giving you to say and he'll begin to develop that in you and you'll be able to walk with him in the spirit in a way you've never been able to do before so pray this with me father in Jesus name you said you'd send the Holy Ghost you said you'd send the Holy and he is in the earth I ask you to send him to me right now Holy Ghost I receive you I ask you to come upon me and fill me right now I receive you now I have received you and I ask you to give me the utterance and I'll begin to speak them right there begin to speak them out fote don zoko blair be willing to say things uch ke kakota banando frige zibo jeba blagadigi monda baske even if it sounds silly if it sounds foolish eso poca dada prada dada thank you holy ghost kita bodoche blaskatini mon foto cobarete gablahaka krun jeng zab zabap kata de bubalo frapo shukoda hopa koda toba das and then you're going to keep Keep doing that, keep doing that, that's the Holy Ghost, and He's helping you to speak the things that He wants you to say.